Welcome to The Woman's Connection. I'm Barry Louise Switzen, your moderator. The Woman's Connection is a program about events shaping women's lives and helping one gain authentic power on a personal or professional level. So won't you stay tuned? Welcome. For the seg this segment of The Woman's Connection, my guest is Alice O'Rourke. She is the Executive Director of New York New Media, and I would like to welcome you. Thank you so much for Hi, joining Barry. me, Alice. What exactly is New Media? New Media is an extremely potent force in our society. It's a way of communicating, doing commerce, and educating. It's the place where technology intersects with media in general of all forms, TV, publishing, advertising. But it is also where technology intersects and changes all of the other industries that have made New York and, in fact, this country great for the last 100 years. Um, new media, as I said, is a brand new way, or as I implied, is a brand new way of going about communicating, doing commerce, and educating. And it's also recreating all of these industries. If I can, I'll give you an example. Be my guest. Um, I think uh, one of my favorite examples is the auction space. We have two very famous auction companies that have formed in the last handful of months, one called Priceline.com and the other called eBay. They are both very much of the net. And what I mean by that is they couldn't have existed without the internet. Priceline, as most people know who listen to the radio here in New York, is a place where buyers and sellers of remnant airline seats can make a market together. And eBay is a California company that, again, creates a market uh, between people looking to buy and people looking to sell things. Those companies didn't exist a couple of years ago. Very interesting niche companies. Yeah, and I think what's particularly interesting um, uh, in the auction space is not only those pure play internet new media companies that I just mentioned, but how the internet has changed the venerable old auction houses of New York City. For instance, Sotheby's, which is, I think, 255 years old this year, recently announced a deal with Amazon.com, the five-year-old Seattle-based bookseller, where they were going to sell mid-priced, or they are going to sell mid-priced collectibles oh, to the middle sakes. class. <laughs> so there's an example of the auction as being totally new of the net and the auction as transforming old industries. Well, actually, it's me meeting middle America's needs. Not so much needs, because they probably didn't know they needed this. Right. It's creating a need. It's creating a desire where everybody can partake. And it's crossing all boundaries. It doesn't me mean if you're here in uh, the United States, you can't bid on something, from what you're saying. Right. If you live in India, Absolutely. there's something all the way around the world. It's so frictionless this system. If you wanted to find other Pez collectors, I'm sure that there are regional conferences for Pez collectors. <laughs> um, and uh, maybe you'd get to a handful of them in your lifetime. Or maybe you'd get around the world, but you wouldn't ever really know if you had seen every bit of inventory. And with the internet, you can pretty much rest assured. So instead of being a couch potato, you can be a computer potato or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> a mouse potato, as they want to, if you want to say it. There's a thought. <laughs> <laughs> New product line, what can I say? That is really interesting, and it's amazing because it came out of basically nowhere. I mean, the government started it, but mm -hmm. then some people started taking advantage of it a little bit more and a little bit more, and so right. it's just blossomed into a whole new uh, industry that uh, knows no bounds, you, one could say. I'd agree with that. How did you get involved with this? Well, I began my career as an attorney and then ah. went over to the business side while working at Colgate Palmolive Company, first in business development and then in marketing of Colgate toothpaste. And I basically stayed with that. Mo most recently, before joining the New York New Media Association, I was the head of sales and marketing for New York State's economic development efforts and this brand new industry, New York's first new industry, large new industry in generations, was being created right in front of my eyes. And uh, so I started paying attention to new media, which claimed that it might create 
up to 120,000 jobs in three years, and it has just about done that. That's incredible. Right. I mean, it, it, for New York to absorb all these additional people, because I'm sure they're coming in from all over the country, to be where it's happening. But and they are. They're not only coming from around the country, they're coming from around the world. Um, New York is really the, the center of the content part of the Internet. And New York, as well as the United States in general, but certainly New York, is about three years ahead of the rest of the world. And so if you want to get a leg up on your colleagues in Europe or in Asia, you're thinking about opening a beachhead in New York so that you can uh, get that leg up. What exactly is the New York New Media Association? We're an industry association that is here to support the and to promote the internet industry in New York. Again, as I said earlier, it's New York's first new industry in generations. And it's an entrepreneurial industry in what is really a Fortune 100 and Wall Street kind of town. And so it needed a lot of support to support these fledgling uh, businesses. So we're here to support that industry as well as those who use the internet in order to do commerce, communicate, or educate. Does it cost a lot of money to join? Or how does one join? Well, it's fairly reasonable, I would say, uh, by New York standards. The price is $125. The membership is open to anyone who is interested in the net. Uh, again, if they're in the industry, or if they think that knowing about the Internet is important to their investing future, to their job future, either to be able to do the job that they're currently doing, or to make a transition into an industry whose biggest need or is qualified people. And that, that uh, transition may be either to set up their own business or to go to work in one of these new media companies. Okay, there's a lot of talk about Silicon Alley and Silicon Valley. Right. What's the difference? <laughs> and are, are we one and the same here in New York? Well, there's a big difference. Uh, Silicon Valley was started 30, 40 years ago. Um, it is a, you know, of the West Coast. Silicon Alley is at best four to five years old. It is, um, it is both a physical place meaning originally the area south of 42nd Street to Canal Street. Now, I would say Silicon Alley is really the entire city, from Wall Street, the canyons of Wall Street, to the angles of the Flatiron District, to the heroic boulevards of Midtown. All of this is really Silicon Alley now. And the reason for that is my earlier point about how the Internet is transforming all of these industries that are in New York, financial services, business services, advertising, publishing, broadcast, music. Therefore, it's everywhere. Sounds very exciting. It's a, I know, well, we'll get into it because there's a couple things I wanted to bring up about streaming media and broadband and we'll, mm -hmm. we can talk about that. Well, we can talk about them now. Mm -hmm. I mean, what is broadband and what is streaming media? Okay. Well, broadband is very high-speed internet connections. And these high-speed internet connections will enable da both data as well as other forms um, to be transmitted to people. Those other forms might be um, high-fidelity high fidelity audio mm -hmm. as well as TV or film quality broadcast uh, um, capabilities on the internet. So you see a convergence is the word between the television and film and your computer. Not a replacement, but a convergence. Most people believe that the computer will never replace TV. It'll sit alongside, um, but be very enabled by these broadband technologies. One of them is streaming media. Would you say it will never replace it because so many people say that the internet and going on a computer is an isolated event. You're doing mm -hmm. it basically by yourself, mm -hmm. whereas with a television, you're doing it as entertainment, a family entertainment, mm -hmm. or a dating entertainment, whatever you want to say. So it has different yes. aspects to it. I think using a computer is a all around a different experience. Um, you sit 
12 inches away from it or 18 inches away from it. And as we all know, as our mothers told us, it's not good to sit that close to a television, right? True. Um, it's, um, the computer is a, or the internet is a many to many experience, mm -hmm. and that is the extraordinary power of it. The television, um, at least for the see foreseeable future, is a is a one to many experience or a many back to one, and so in many many ways it, it's it's different. Well, everything happens so much faster on the internet than it does in real life, anyways. You first of all you had the telephone, right, and then you went to fax ma no answering machines, and people right. said an answering machine what's that? Right. Then you went to faxes. Because I remember in an office, you could send out something, and okay, it's got snail mail, so to speak. Three, four days later, they right. pick up the phone and give you a response. Then you right. had the fax, and it's like, oh, well, I can go home. It's 6 o'clock. I can go home now. Right. And five minutes later, as you're walking out the door, they've got a response, and you've got to <laughs> redo the whole project all over again because it's not mm -hmm. right, and you're still mm -hmm. there at midnight. And right. now with the Internet, it's just as fast as a fax. Uh, because everything is changing at the speed of light, or as they say in New York, in the New York Second. I mean, it's awesome. Well, the New York Second has been replaced by the 24 by 7 lifestyle, which is that one can be connected and be working or communicating or being educated or being entertained 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And again, I'm going back to using that word frictionless. It makes work, it makes play makes all those things yeah. very fast, very frictionless. And New York is a fast place to begin with, so it's like, is there ever any downtime here? Let's, if a woman wanted to move into new mm -hmm. media, what would you suggest she do? What would be the first steps? Well, I think the most important um, thing that I could say there is that there is a place for um, many, many people in the new media or internet business. Um, certainly you need to be able to turn on and use a computer. But you do not need to be able to be a C++ or other advanced language programmer. But some degree of technological savvy in between those two places is required. And it depends, and how much is required depends on what it is that you want to do. It's very easy to get that required amount of technology. Um, you what can I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Go. I was going to say, what would you say is the first step to getting that type of uh, technology? Well, I think uh, there are any number of courses that are available. There is every single college or university or place for adult education in New York offers courses in Internet technologies that pretty much any person interested in the media world um, or the, the tools of the media world would be able to go in pick up and, and uh, benefit by in their job search. So I'd suggest that. There's an organization in New York called Web Girls, and their mission is to bring technology to girls and women. They offer courses that are so inexpensive, they're virtually free, 10 and $15 for technology courses. That's incredible. So that's W-E-B-G-R-R-L-S dot com. Um, you can also find courses on technology on the internet for free, and that would be take you to my second uh, recommendation uh -huh. is um, that you surf the internet. Uh, go to the internet, uh, buy something, do research on something, whatever fascinates you in this life you can pursue in the internet, whether it's cooking or gardening or fashion or Poetry, whatever it is, it's there in, in, in an incredible amount of richness. And I would suggest surfing the net, making a few transactions on the Internet. Just become familiar with yes, what it's all absolutely. about. Absolutely. You can't go looking for a job in this industry <laughs> unless you have. Um, but these are hardly onerous, uh, impossible requirements that are being set up. You've got to learn a little bit about what's going on in the industry. and. There are a lot of publications that you might want to acquaint yourself with. There's a handful of them that are online, uh, at New York, Alley Cat News, and Silicon, Silicon Alley Reporter. All have online newsletters that come out daily or weekly. 
Uh, two of them also have print versions, uh, Alley Cat News and Silicon Alley Reporter. Um, these are local New York publications that focus on the whole new media internet scene, but largely on New York. And so if you read a handful of issues of these, you'll see what companies are doing what. Uh, you'll find out which companies have gotten financing, which companies are seeking financing. And financing is always a clue to companies looking to hire. And then the final thing, if I may, that I would yes. suggest is that you join Minma. Minma has traditionally been a place um, where, among other things, people who wanted to put a big toe into the new media pond have come to go to our networking events where they meet people and catch the beat, to go to our panels where they learn the language uh, and meet the people. So go to our website and see what kind of jobs are out there. And that's uh, New York N Y N M A dot org. Excellent. Ah, Couldn't have done it better myself. It's a tongue, Thank you. tongue twister. You're welcome. It's quite involved. I mean, it's like, because when I've looked th the net mm -hmm. and looked for jobs on the internet, right. it's all interns wanted, interns. And then the other thing that was mm -hmm. confusing to me was like, you need three to five years experience. Mm -hmm. And if it's such a new industry, how can you have three, to, have five three to five years, years. experience? I mean, it's like a catch-22. Well, I have spoken with, on panels with internet entrepreneurs and mm -hmm. they have addressed that three to five years requirement that's to separate the people that really want it from the people that really that don't really want it so they understand we understand oh, the, it's only been in, industry's only been here for three to five years but if you really want it um, y you know you'll get it I mean obviously anytime you're looking for a job you have to know the company that you're looking for you have to know the industry that you're looking in I mean, those things don't change the absolute final point I'd like to make about new media and the internet is that they're looking for, beyond your technical knowledge, whatever that might be, beyond your net surfing experience, they're looking for people that have two intangibles. One is they're looking for people that can work as if their hair is on fire. <laughs> this industry is a land grab. What we are seeing right now is a race to cap capture as much of the market that you're seeking as quickly as you can. It's an industry where utter efficiency is required of the worker. 95% or more of what you do has to come to something. Sounds and almost like the railroads, land grabbing. Exactly. Staking and claim. So they need people who understand that this is the pace of this industry, that it's better to be there first, plant your flag, claim as much land mm -hmm. as you can, than it is to have it all 100% right but get there second. And that brings me to the second point, which is in analog industries, there is meaning non-digital industries, there's a real tendency to try and get things perfect before anything is done, to study, to research, to put together um, a launch effort that would rival Storm and Norman's Desert Storm. And, and of course, that's exactly what we want when we're going to war. But when we're launching an internet business, again, it's better to be first. It, the internet is famous for that concept of the soft launch and it's better to have done a soft launch that you're changing the day after it's live than to have something perfect that is late or too late. So there's uh, the issue of get there before it's too late and the land's all taken right. and establish your presence on the web. And the workers, the people that go to this industry, I would say beyond a modicum of technological savvy that's appropriate to the job you're looking for, mm -hmm. that is the most important personal characteristic that it oh, is being looked for. Now, going back to somebody putting, uh, getting into this business, you learn the, t uh, the terminology, right. you take classes mm -hmm. and develop a skill of some sort, mm -hmm. then what would you do? Put your resume up on the internet? Well, there are any number of really great sites to post 
uh, jobs and to post your own resume. Minma one, runs one of those sites. We have about 800 jobs up at any given time. Um, at New York has a site. There's another site called AIM, A-I-M. Those are just a handful. Hot Jobs has technology jobs, Monster Board, <laughs> many others. Um, surf those sites and see what companies are looking for. And then put your, and put your resume, resume up. up on it. You know, I didn't mention this, but I, I think it's almost a requirement. It would certainly be a fun way to learn, and that is to go to some of the community sites like theglobe.com or GeoCities and develop your own homepage. And that would give you the experience of deploying the basic tools that are used in developing a website. And all of that is made really easy for you at sites like GeoCities and the Globe and others. But go there. And put it on your business card so everybody can see who <laughs> you are. <laughs> you can even start a business from those pages. That sounds good to me. I like that. I like starting new businesses. What do you see the vision of the Internet? Well, I let me take uh, one area in particular. The largest um, area of commerce for women is on the Internet is, shop, is shopping. Mm -hmm. And uh, they like clothes and they like books. They, uh, so let's stay with shopping since that's Sounds their number one favorite. <laughs> right now, the technology on the Internet is good enough for you to be able to go to a site look at a picture of, say, a terry cloth robe mm -hmm. and be able to tell whether or not the quality of the terry cloth meets your specific specifications. I think what, what we have in front of us and not too terribly far in front of us are um, personal fashion shows, where just the things you want to see are shown to you, followed by a virtual try-on room where you get to try those clothes on your figure to see how they look. Wow. And, and I would imagine that not too far after that is customized clo clothes being available for the masses. Because if we've got your measurements and we know what looks good, then we'll just What's order next? it now. And that's already happened to a certain extent. Mm. So I think those are just some things right over the horizon and shopping. Well, it sounds as almost with everything going at such a fast pace here in New York, you've got to look for services that are going to make your life a lot easier. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the keys. Mm -hmm. Shopping on the internet, or it's replacing catalogs, because you can't really see and touch those. Right. But it's the same concept, and you can order it just as fast, and you know it's done, it's over. And uh, you've got it in three to five business days, so to speak. Right. Alice, in the closing moments of the show, what would you like to leave the audience with? I'd like to say that this is the golden age right now for the Internet, and the, the time is ripe to think about it in terms of investing, in terms of uh, preparing yourself to learn about it so that you can do the job that you currently have better, stay current with it, or to start your business and finally to come and join one of the existing businesses. So this is a perfect time to do those things. It's a great time to be in the internet business in New York. Well, I thank you so much for all your information, Alice. Thank you. It's been wonderful to have you here, and I've learned so much. It's been incredible. It's, it's really been worthwhile to um, start learning about the internet and going forward, because it's like here, we are here, no matter what you say, and that is the future. So thank you again. And thank you for joining us, and I hope we've given you some, or rather, Alice O'Rourke has given you a lot of uh, insight into how to get started in new media. Thank you for joining us. Don't touch that dial. The Woman's Connection will be right back. Welcome. We're with them. Georgia Romandi and the Passionate Gardener, and we're going to bring a little aromatherapy into our homes and our offices. Georgia, tell us, what have you got here? Oh, this is fun to make, smells wonderful, and you'll enjoy having it around. This is a lavender pomander. 
Oh, how pretty. Very easy to make. Oh, it smells lovely. Doesn't it smell delightful? Well, the nice thing about Whoa. lavender is that lavender has a very calming, soothing properties to it. Oh. So I make these as gifts to uh, give, and you can see I've actually wrapped them and put them in cellophane. They make great bridal gifts, great hostess gifts. And because lavender has that very soothing and calming property to it, it's also wonderful. I keep it by my computer, and when I'm stressed out, oh, I just man. sort of take it and take a whiff. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, heaven. Now, I'll show you how to make them. Very okay. easy. You can get these little styrofoam balls at any craft store. You can get this tacky glue at any craft store. And it is called tacky glue. Tacky glue. And you just need a brush and some lavender florets, which can come from your garden if you have lavender and you dry them. Otherwise, there are resources in the back of my book from which you can order. Oh, so great. that makes it very easy. So all you do is you're going to take the glue and you just very carefully spread it along this styrofoam ball. Right. And then all you do is keep dabbing, dabbing it, it right into the lavender and then just keep pressing it down. Oh, easy man. as anything. They make a wonderful gift. Then you can They're tie beautiful. ribbons around them and enjoy them. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Have fun. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you for joining us, and I hope you'll have the pleasure of making the lavender ball also. I'm going to be using this in my apartment for in every room as well as chasing away the moths because they are a wonderful repellent. Happy aromatherapy to you. Bye now.